today Hi, we yeah. have yeah one of our favorite guests coming back for the third time <laughs> she could come back for 333 times and it would be yeah. the best show yeah. ever so it would just get better <laughs> and one of the reasons that the shows get better and better is because this is one of the most intelligent women I've ever talked to. And I need, oh, well, besides beautiful, but, you know, that's like whatever. Um, <laughs> I want her to list her degrees because the topic we are talking about today is very, very controversial. And if anybody yeah. has, you know, the wherewithal, the whatever, the wherewithal is not the correct um, what the would qualifications I say? to speak the about qualifications. it. Then it's definitely it. yes. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I should have had you talk now. The qualifications <laughs> to speak about our topic today is life coaching. And yeah, and some of the and therapy in general, how people should be aware on social media of who they're following, and especially if they're taking their advice or medical advice, that they need to make sure that it's coming from the right person. And so, yeah, and I thought yep. I'd give a, just a brief context to our audience. How this started was when uh, I messaged Lena and said, you know, we have a, well, I won't take the subject name of the coach because we just had them on and I don't want to like embarrass them, but such and such coach on air and we just uploaded their episode and, and you were like, uh, what's that? <laughs> And I was like, well, actually, it's a life coach with, and supposedly they specialize in this subject. And you're like, there's no such thing. <laughs> and I was like, that is true. And I've always wondered how do these, all these life coaches popping up on my, you know, the mental health communities that I follow, how are they all popping up and getting certified so quickly and so rapidly and increasing? And that's when we thought, okay, let's, let's talk about it on the, on the air. Yeah, so um, my degrees, let's see. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from Lehman College in New York. I have a master's degree in forensic psychology from John Jay College of Criminal Justice, which is like the forensic mecca in, for yeah. Yeah, in forensic psychology. Then I have another master's degree in clinical psychology from Albizi University in Miami. And then I have a doctoral degree in clinical psychology with a forensic emphasis from Albizi University. I am a licensed mental health counselor and I am also a licensed clinical psychologist. And I am must be a glutton for punishment because I'm in the process of getting <laughs> board certified in forensic psychology. <clears throat> so wow, congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. The process yeah, is insane. Please. Please. But, um, you can yeah, do it no, no. <laughs> Neil and I Neil and I were kind of chatting back and forth and and he said he mentioned that this um <clears throat> coach and so my my question of what is that was kind of you know sarcastic in yeah, the sense that of course, I, of I, course. Knew, yeah. I knew what he was saying but um yeah. i don't want to knock all coaches i think um mm -hmm. coaches you know you can if you're motivating someone and you're kind of giving them directives get up go to the gym make sure you do your laundry and things like that and you're motivating someone good for you. The problem with the coaching. Left at tan. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> gym, laundry, tan. Yeah, gym, laundry, tan, right. <laughs> the problem with the coaching industry is it's, 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 it's not a thing. Anybody can wake up in the morning and say, I'm a coach today. There's no education. Yeah. There's no certification. I mean, there are certifications. Like I see these schools on Instagram that are like, pay $19.99 to get certified. Um, <laughs> what does that even mean? Like there's no yeah. education, Can I borrow? There's, no training, <laughs> there's no certification, there's no licensure, there's no overseeing entity, there's no mm -hmm. licensing board. And so literally you can wake up tomorrow yeah. morning and say, I'm a life coach and that's all it takes. So what are yeah. we really doing yeah. here? Um, and, and again, it's not to knock anybody who's trying to motivate or whatever. The problem is a lot of these coaches are dipping their feet into mental health. And that's where it becomes extremely dangerous because you mm -hmm. don't have training. You don't have education. You don't have any idea what you're doing. And you're dealing with people with serious issues, depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. lack of motivation, self-esteem problems, relationship issues, suicide. And so yeah. the, the legal world is, has been 
getting hip to this and seeing that it's really, really dangerous because these people have no right. idea what they're doing. And so yeah. um, the legal world is starting to take notice. I sent an article to Neil about how, you know, there's, there's starting to be a real crackdown on these coaches because you can just jump on social media yeah. and say you're a coach. And what does that even mean? I mean, an ex-felon yeah. without a GED can, sex offender can say, I'm a life coach. And what, like, just go for oh my it. my gosh. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's crazy. a real issue. You know, you didn't go to school. You didn't go to medical school. You didn't, you didn't do anything. <laughs> you just decided you're yeah. going to do this. Yeah. Well, it, and it's, like it's you the said, claims that really get to, it, it's not even that if somebody just, if a life coach told me, well, here's what I do. I just talk to people. I motivate them. That's what I give them. Okay, fine. But when you're making a claim of helping people, like you said, deal with actual mental health issues, that could one wrong, t- one tiny wrong piece of advice could send them like yeah, yeah. years back in the progress of whatever they're making if they're talking to actual psychologists actual licensed therapists it's like it's a very serious deal to make even a single mistake like that right and that's what kind of the focus that's what the complaint is if it's just somebody who's claiming i'll give you a few motivational speeches okay which we can find on youtube as well but it's it's if you're going to give an actual advice that is going to affect your mind and your body then that is really serious business right it is. And you hear these horrific cases of people who, you know, the layman people don't know any better. They don't, it's not their fault. They don't know yeah. coaching versus therapist versus psychologist versus social worker versus psychiatrist. A lot of people don't even know the difference between a psychologist and psycho- psychiatrist. And that's, that's not their fault. That's not for them to really know. So if somebody comes and says like, Hey, pay me $350 an hour. Also, these coaches are, 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 are charging egregious amounts. And, and I'll change your life. You know, this person, you're giving this person who's trying to get help, who's trying to better their life, this kind of false hope. And we're seeing yeah. even some cases where people have suicided because they thought they were getting therapy. Wow. And they were just yeah. getting motivational quotes from Instagram from a, from a non-qualified professional. And that's where I have a problem with it. You know, it's because just life coaching is not therapy. It's not therapy. It is not therapy right. at all. And it should not try to touch on pathology and mental health issues because those people are not educated. They're not trained. They're not qualified. They're not licensed. And so you're right. seeing this. That's where the issue comes in is kind of that line of like, and it's just the same thing with like a physical, you know, like I have a personal trainer. My personal trainer studied, um, you know, physiology, studied anatomy, studied um, uh, exercise, you know, physio- physical science and is certified by a national board. So I trust him to tell me to squat in a certain way and fix my form and whatever it is. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just ask some random person to just tell me how to do things with my body and lift heavy weights and potentially injure myself. Well, it's the same with mental health. You don't want just yeah. anybody. Even more so with mental health. Even more so. Yeah, right. Pay for it. The other danger that I've seen with life coaching is it's therapists who have had their license revoked, licenses revoked. <gasps> oh, really? Really? Big thing. So, wow. Um, I didn't I'm, know that. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. Um, so I have a group of psychologist friends on Instagram that we kind of <clears throat> consult and we give each other, you know, advice. And a lot of them are very, very anti coaching because of the dangers of it. And so we we share articles and research and stuff like that. And now a lot of psychologists and licensed therapists are starting to, you know, really out certain people. I won't name any names, but you see these therapists who had inappropriate relationships with patients, slept with their patients, uh, had their licenses revoked for one reason or another. And because they can't make a living because they no longer are a licensed professional, they're dubbing themselves coaches. So that's even more dangerous. Hey everyone, I'm Neil Trevetti. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like listening to your podcasts while you drive, go jogging, cook, and just go about your day. Subscribe and listen to us on platforms like Anchor, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Have you subscribed? Have you ever have you ever heard of um, like psychologists 
um, slash life coaches. I mean, is this, you know, I mean, are any of your friends, you know, doing so, yes. something like that? Because that would be good. That would yes, be okay. and you do have those people. I have, I have friends or I know of people who are licensed therapists or licensed psychologists who decided they didn't want insurance involved. They didn't want a licensing mm -hmm. body governing their practices. And so they switched mm -hmm. over to coaching because there's, there's less oversight and there's le there are less rules and no real ethics code, which insurance you know, companies rule yeah, the insurance world. Companies. And so now they call themselves coaches and they engage in more of motivational coaching type practice, which, you know, that's their choice, but at least they have the knowledge and the background. Yeah. They made a yeah. Their choice which is a little different than somebody who just wakes up in the morning and says, I'm bored and I don't really want to get a real job. So I'm just going to call myself a legend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And again, yeah. I don't want to knock people. I understand like we're, life is expensive and we all need to make a living and it's really hard out there, but it's when you think that just because you've watched some YouTube videos and you've seen some motivational quotes on social media that you know what you're doing, that's where the danger arises. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. It, it would be like me and Rini and I just saying, let's become life coaches. We've done 58 episodes of a mental health podcast, so we surely know everything, right? <laughs> right. And I would probably I mean, you guys more than anybody else, because at least you guys pay attention <laughs> and, you listen and you interview people and you, your, your motives are right and you have your own struggles. I would probably trust you guys more than somebody else. But <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Okay, so a psychiatrist is a medical doctor. They've been to medical school, mm -hmm. they did residency, they did fellowship. They, you know, I have friends who are psychiatrists who have delivered babies and did family mm -hmm. medicine before they did psychiatry. So they are medical doctors, they have gone through medical school first and foremost, and then they specialized in psychiatry, which is the focus on psychiatric issues. Um, they prescribe medications. And they, their focus as a medical doctor is on psychiatry. A psychologist is not a medical doctor. We are not medical doctors, but we do have a doctorate in psychology. So either a PhD yeah. or a PsyD, um, which is one step up from a master's level therapist, like a social worker, a licensed mental health counselor, oh, okay. marriage family therapist. Um, we've done a pre-doctoral training, residency, post-doctoral training, and we, if you're, and then we become licensed. So we are specialized in evaluations, assessment, and treatment of psychiatric and mental health disorders. We do have prescribing psychologists, which is relatively new, um, but most psychologists do not prescribe. So if you look at it from like a higher hierarchy, you have master's level therapists, which are social workers, licensed mental health counselors, licensed marriage and family therapists. So I'm an LMHC. I did that first. Then you have psychologists who did a doctorate and then you have, I would put them sideways or maybe up, you have psychiatrists who went to medical school and they all serve different purposes and can do different things, but they're all, you know, have gone to grad school to one level or another and most are licensed or in the process of getting licensed. True. So can we True. talk about True. the difference of, you know, you in your life as a patient whether you should get a therapist, a social worker, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist? That's a great, great question, Rini, because people think, like, I'm clearly having some issues. I need somebody. What do I do now? So I, I'm obviously biased <laughs> because I'm a psychologist. <laughs> um, and I really feel like psychologists have a better grip on assessment and evaluation and diagnosis and really figuring out what's going on. That being said, if you feel like you have a pretty good knowledge of yourself, and I know this is just kind of you know, some depression or some anxiety, or it's I'm going through a breakup or I'm grieving, or you have a pretty good handle on your issues, going to a master's level therapist is 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 really fine. You know, you don't have to get a full psychological evaluation and and do the whole thing. Um, so the difference between a social worker, a licensed mental health counselor, and a licensed marriage and family therapist, they're all master's level, um, is really, it really depends on the individual. It depends on the schooling, the program. You know, social workers are, can be great psychotherapists. Marriage and family therapists, obviously, they focus in on that area, marriage and family. So 
couples counseling, family counseling, and then licensed mental health counselors, which is what I am and is a really same thing. They're kind of psychotherapists. So it depends on the individual. When you're looking for a provider, I would say um, if you go on psychology today, for example, just really, I would, I would advise honing in on what their specialty is. Is their specialty depression or anxiety or substance abuse or ADHD or autism or whatever your particular um, issues are. And I think it's more important to be a match with the particular individual than what their discipline is, if that makes sense. What's the most important is what they call the therapeutic alliance, right? So you have all right. different orientations. You have psychodynamic, which is kind of like Freud, you know, old school, like you really want to have sex with your father. I'm oversimplifying. You have cognitive behavioral therapy. You have dialectical behavior therapy. You have solution oriented. You have Jungian, Carl Jung. You have psychoanalytic. You have all different kinds of orientations and models and the way you're trained and the way you attack, you know, or, or help mental health problems. And research yep. shows that no matter what orientation the therapist is, they're all effective in their own way. But the most important factor in successful therapy is the therapeutic alliance, the relationship with your mm. therapist. And so, right. even though my therapist is a completely different orientation and, and is more of an old school model than what I use, you know, our therapeutic relationship has worked for years. And so, you know, I was hooked. Yes. I was hooked on day one. Um, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I, this is somebody that everybody knows the name. I mean, you're living under a rock if you don't know Tony Robbins. <laughs> now, I understand that basically he is a life coach. He doesn't have degrees. Correct. Right. And this man is out there <clears throat> making a gazillion dollars because he can talk. How do you feel about Tony? So, you know, I have mixed feelings about Tony Robbins and all these kind of big wig motivational speakers because, look, mm -hmm. if you watch a Tony Robbins, <clears throat> you're going to get motivated. You know, he's an entertainer. Mm -hmm. yeah. He knows how to do it. You know, I've watched his stuff and I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'll, I'll watch his stuff and be like, yeah, that's it. I'm going to the gym or I'm going to clean my house mm -hmm. and I'm going to change my life. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with that, with, you know, these big wig, you know, larger than life, idle kind of motivational speakers. If it helps you, you know, get up and motivate, good for you. However, again, same thing with life coaches. He's not a mental health therapist. He doesn't know about you know, pathological people. He probably only speaks to a certain type of, of person. And the, the issue with motivational speakers is they work, but they work short term. You know, you'll watch a video and you'll be like, yes, I'm going to change my life. And you'll go I'm do your so laundry. glad you brought that up. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch even me. I'll watch a Tony Robbins video and be like, let me, let me do the freaking laundry. That's been sitting there for two weeks that I've been avoiding. I'm going to go do the laundry. But, you know, an yeah. hour later, Tony Robbins is not on the TV it's, anymore. And then what? Yeah. That's, that's exactly so true. That. That's been a huge, huge thing for me over the years. Because as you people who are not as well informed about depression or mental health in general always tell me, well, yeah, just watch these motivational videos. So they'll put you in a good mood. And, and I don't think and they, they realize that. Ex they will. Exactly. But it's just like sometimes, what, like you said, long term is a totally different thing right. it's like being Im immersed in a good movie you'll watch it you'll love it you may review it like oh let me write a review i just saw the best movie ever and then you forget it. you don't think about it 24 7 all day all night like you know so it's the same way i feel so i'm so glad you brought that up because a lot of times i find that the motivational quotes and the speakers are so wonderful to hear and it's a really good feeling but it's not always practical in the long run because it's like okay now what mm -hmm. that's what i always ask myself okay i watched it i was even motivated to do something that i wasn't before i did right. it now what and, and again it'll motivate you it works he has a good message yeah. good for him but what am i gonna do after the laundry's done and I feel like crap again. Mm -hmm. you know, right. What are you gonna exactly. Do? So that's, yeah. can I throw yeah. another name at you? Yeah. Dr. Phil. <laughs> your reaction. That's the master shot. We're gonna use that shot in the preview. You have to, that has to be the promo shot. That's the promo <laughs> shot. Um, 
Okay, so Dr. Phil, you know it's interesting. <clears throat> I've watched Dr. Phil in the past and totally agreed with him and been like, yeah, he's mm -hmm. calling people out on their crap. And he's not wrong. The problem with Dr. First of all, Dr. Phil is not licensed. Um, he, he's not I but licensed. I, I think he did that tact. He gave up his license quite a few years ago, but I think he did that tactfully so that he couldn't be um, sued for malpractice because it is entertainment, right? And so that's the thing. Of I'm not course. saying Dr. Phil is a complete moron. I'm not saying he doesn't know what he's talking about, but it's, he's very similar to Tony Robbins. He's an entertainer. He's an entertainer. Yeah. He, nothing can be fixed in a one hour slot. You know, we see snippets, yep. we see edits, we see, you know, Dr. Phil with his tough love attitude. Again, I've watched Dr. Phil and been like, oh my God, I'm in total agreement with him. Like he needs to tell that teenager to get his crap together and talk, stop talking to his mother like that. But when Dr. Phil says cut, then what? These poor people have to go back home to their reality and yeah. their and their world and their circumstances. And is Dr. Phil going to make sure that they're okay? I don't know. Maybe he refers them for Probably. therapy. Who knows? Oh. Um, so, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Dr. Phil. There have been like stories. I don't know how true they are. It's just rumors and tabloids and all that. But there have been so many stories of how like people who have been on his show, it's just that episode taping is when he's that close to you and involved once and he sets them off to people that he has deals with he has like centers not saying the centers all don't work i'm not saying that at right. all but his involvement and his show and his company his entertainment company's involvement in your life stops this when they stop taping the episode at least that's what i've heard i don't know could be mm -hmm. wrong but it's it's exploitative, you know, it's good entertainment. Yes. I've watched it. I've been guilty of watching it and been like, yeah, you Me know. Too. But it's, yeah. these people have genuine real problems and they're Come going on TV in front of millions of people. And then are we following up with them? Are we making sure they have He does sometimes. Like, and that's I, 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 yeah. I can't speak on that. I have no sometimes. idea. Sometimes. Yeah. And good for him. But, you know, yeah. but, but so at, many at the end of the day, it is a TV show. We, and we have it's to keep that in mind. It's a yeah. TV show. That's not how real life works. You can't fix something yeah. in an hour by yelling at someone. It just doesn't work. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> when we talk about buzz and social media buzz, and especially regarding mental health, right? The other one, I'm so curious because the other day I saw a story of yours where you you had some skepticism about. I think it's nine eight eight, which just went into like. Oh yeah. Let me give you before we get your perspective because I'm so like. I'm so eager to know what people in the mental health space think about that because from a, from somebody who struggles with mental health issues and in my mental health community online, we were all like ecstatic, right? Our first reaction was, oh, finally, someone for us, you know, we'll have, but then we saw like you and others that, oh, it's not without its issues. It's not going to be perfect. It's not, wait you know, as good as some of us might think. So fill us in on that. Cause I know you said, Oh, I don't know about this. Like you put that in a story or something. So fill us in. First of all, for anyone who doesn't know, can you tell them what that's all about, how that works and then why it's not as perfect as some people might think it is. Yeah. And what a great question. You know. So 988 came out this week and it is the kind of the 911 for mental health. It's, it's a, it's a, three digit code you can memorize and call if you're having any mental health issues. My, my problem with this, and I'm a little bit skeptical and I'm a little bit jaded because I've worked with such sick and, and personality disordered population, manipulative populations and inmates. I'm, I'm stereotyping here, but you guys get the gist. Yeah. I, I find that people who have true, true mental health problems, and I'm not talking about, you know, a lot of these therapists, they're very pro 988, which is, fine, but they haven't dealt with the level of pathology that I've dealt with. You know, they're kind of dealing with, I'm so depressed my Starbucks closed down. And it's like, that's very different. <laughs> you know, like that's very different first world problems. I'm, I know I'm sounding very mean right now, but first world problems are very different. No, you're fine. Like I'm hearing yeah. voices that are telling me to kill myself. Those are very, two very sure. different types of pathology. And so yeah. for me, those who are truly, truly mentally ill, those who are schizophrenic, bipolar, um, serious substance abuse issues, suicide, you know, depression, things like that, those people are not likely to call 988. That's, that's my thing. Yeah. People who are right. going to call, and also that hotline is probably going to be clogged with a lot of, dare I say this, and I might get backlash for this, 
with a lot of attention seekers, okay? A lot of mm. people who are yeah. kind of, you know, oh my God, you're not doing what I want. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Excuse me, I'm cursing. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> no, and so my skepticism between kind of people who are gonna clog that line with not real mental health issues, as well as the real sickest people out there are not likely to call 988 because they're so sick they don't even know that that's a thing. That's mm. where, kind of my skepticism comes in. Also, I also think 988 is very performative. I think that, oh, look, we put out this hotline. Okay, well, after you call the hotline, what happens? Are these people really being directed to places they can get actual mental health? Are you giving more community resources? Are you hiring more therapists? Are you paying them better? Are you helping people get health insurance? You know, I have so many questions about what happens if I'm if I call 988 and I say, I'm suicidal, will you send somebody to then put me in the hospital? Okay, that's a good thing. You might have saved a life. Yeah. But after 72 hours in the hospital, then what? You know, I think it's just kind right. of this formative, look, we, we care about mental health. But I don't, I don't hear that they're funneling more money to community programs, to the poor, to those who are seriously mm -hmm. mentally ill. And so, yes, the idea of 988 is good, and I'm sure it will be helpful to some people, especially, you know, younger she people. She don't know who's on the other end of the line. That's the other thing. I heard they're not hiring qualified mental health people. They're just kind of hiring, hiring really? operators. And so, yeah. like... How is an wow. operator, operator going to do a suicide risk assessment? I mean, I'm sure they'll get some training. I have too many questions to say whether 988 is going to work. As or you should. Not. Yeah. Yeah. No. As I mean, we all should, because if, if we're going to rely on this thing as a mental health emergency, a true emergency, like you were describing, then we should have questions and we should have answers from that. Right. Why, why don't I call them and have them transfer all the calls to you? <laughs> if you pay, if they pay off my school loans, I'll be more than happy to do that. Um, oh, but, gosh, that's, that's a, that's a 10 year. I mean, I think know. for some people, especially people who don't have access to care or don't know where to turn or young people who maybe don't have a supportive family, maybe 988 mm -hmm. will be an absolute gem and a complete you know, a, a mm -hmm. great, great resource. But I am skeptical of, and I, I get, I get knocked for this term a lot, but kind of attention seeking, superficial yeah. people, um, people who are just trying to disrupt the, the you know, but who knows? I, I get, What's the difference between them and suicide prevention? You mean 988 and suicide prevention? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Something. I don't, yeah. I really don't know. I think um, also, you know, in my experience, truly, truly, truly suicidal people, they don't tell anybody. They don't call. Yeah. That's the That's the irony with, with suicide risk assessment, which is it's, its own field that has been researched and studied and all that kind of stuff. You know, yes, yeah, some people who are having suicidal thoughts and are scared of, of their thoughts and really are thinking, I, I want to die, but I want help, they will reach out. But somebody who's already made up their mind, they're not calling a hotline. They're not calling, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. look for so other funny. signs. Like, are they giving their things away? Are they, you know, there's so many other suicide assessment signs for somebody who's trying to go in and kill themselves. And this was one of my favorite shows because, you know, I mean, just great, like great conversation. Right? I, I always a pleasure talking with you guys. I adore you guys. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you. Thank you Seriously. guys. Yeah, thank, thank you for doing this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, great you. conversation. I loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. We'll talk soon. We'll okay. chat soon. Thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you to Dr. Lena Haji for coming on a third time. and helping everybody every mental health patient who is looking to seek some kind of help be sure to hit like on this video and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode thanks everyone once again we will see you right here next week at 9 a.m pacific standard time have a good one